My response was that he was in the same class of creatures as Spurgeon, Simpson, and Tozer. Art laughed at my response. I liken Pastor Joyce to Gideon in the Bible. Judges 6, 15 through 16 says, Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you. Like Gideon, Pastor Joyce has been an example of an obedient servant, and God, without a doubt, has been with Art and Bonnie. Art and Bonnie have fought the good fight, they have finished the course, and have kept the faith. A young preacher once said, How many times have we claimed this promise as we set out on a new venture for God? The promise Art was referring to in 1979 was Philippians 1.6. For I am confident in this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Christ Jesus. Pastor Joyce stands charged with being an obedient servant of God, and here comes the judge. Sir, please bring in the defendant and his accomplice. <laughs> Court officer, I will throw you in jail. <laughs> Don't make me come down there. <laughs> Order in the court. Source of pure vigor. 
Now these charges that uh, we're going to read cover a number of years, Your Honor, so with your permission, I'll start from the beginning of the Johnson City Alliance Church. Permission granted. Thank you. In 1979, the defendant, Art Joyce, and his accomplice, Bonnie, his wife, moved to Johnson City from Michigan with their children, Brian and Brenda, to start a new Alliance Church. The two of them, working together, gathered a small congregation and began worshiping as the Johnson City Alliance Church. It is charged that Reverend Joyce, seeing the need for a church building, together with the members, actually did most of the work himself. This included wiring, plumbing, driving nails, whatever needed to be done. Look at it. Look at that. Did you see that? <laughs> Jury, how do you find the defendants? Guilty. Yeah. Okay. Well, the next charge is that for 34 years, in addition to praying for the sick and comforting the hurting, he developed a church website. He led a Boy Scout troop and consistently preached sermons which brought both conviction and comfort to his congregation. He seems to have a supernatural amount of energy. Why, he and Bonnie even have five children, including two sets of twins. Jury, how do you find the defendants? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty! This is very gratifying. <laughs> it is furthermore charged that for many years, Reverend Joyce himself led the congregational singing. And he was especially fond of hymns by one A.B. Simpson. <laughs> hymns that only he could sing. <laughs> Sorry about that. I will so we'll find you in contempt of court. <laughs> Jury, how do you find the defendant? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty! <laughs> Well, for the sake of time, Your Honor, may, may I just read a list of further charges and present them to the jury? Permission granted. Thank you, Your Honor. On a weekly basis, the defendant published the church bulletin. He emailed silas of encouragement, organized prayer chains, and sent out prayer requests, and made even more delicious coffee, roasting the beans himself. <laughs> when the need arose, he cooked Wednesday night meals and organized church picnics. On one occasion, he and his son dug up and repaired a broken water line for a widow in the church. And on top of all this, he recorded five daily radio shows. Objection. Objection, Your Honor. He's badgering the defense. <laughs> Order in the court. <laughs> Objection or rule. They were radio programs. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Throughout all his responsibilities, Reverend Joyce has maintained a keen sense of humor and a readiness to laugh. Well, on one occasion, on one occasion, he impersonated a pope. He even wore this funny hat. And on several occasions, he impersonated a rabbi as he led the congregation in celebrating the Seder meal. He was adept at using his proudest possession, <laughs> the bullhorn, to direct games during church picnics. He even volunteered to be the target in the dunk tank. <laughs> Kids love dunking their pastor. Well, Your Honor, it so happens that we have actual video evidence that I think amounts to a smoking gun that will surely persuade the court that the defendant not only possesses the dynamism to carry out these feats, but that he will soon be offered an opportunity to cash in on the notoriety his boundless energy affords him. An opportunity he will surely refuse. But it is a universally known fact that the defendant is the inspiration for the popular five-hour energy drink. <laughs> Universally, no. <laughs> this 
secret is, is up. For the, for the benefit of jurors who may be unfamiliar with the product, we need to take a look at its most recent promotional video. Come on, know what I did the last one? Come on, know what I did? Come on, know what I did the last five hours? I played a round of golf. And then I read a book about teaching myself how to play guitar. Ran 10 miles while knitting myself a sweater. <laughs> Jumped out of a plane. Finally, I became a ping pong master while recording. My debut album. How you ask? Five hour energy. I get hours of energy now, and no crash later. Wait to see the next five hours. Come on, know what I did the last five? I think we got it. Well, Your Honor, in the course of our investigation, we discovered a secret that has been concealed until now. Upon his retirement, the Five Hour Energy Company is set to offer the defendant the opportunity to be the national spokesman for an all new, more powerful energy drink that will bear his name. They call it Joyce Juice. <laughs> we have in our possession a copy of the previously unseen commercial that they plan to debut any day. With your honor's permission, we'd like to share that, that evidence with the jury. Permission granted. Thank you. Simpson's greatest hits. National <laughs> syndicated radio program. A council of rebellious teens. While rewiring the electrical panel. Now shut off the main breaker. Paul <laughs> Desayer. While roasting, grinding, and brewing the best coffee on the planet. How do you ask? Or Joyce Energy. I get hours of energy now, and no crash later. What do you see me in retirement? <laughs> Your Honor, I think this evidence speaks for itself. The prosecution rests. Now we will hear from the defense attorney. Your Honor, members of the jury, it is well known that Art and Bonnie Joyce have raised five children, now grown, who love the Lord and are themselves raising a new generation to follow in their footsteps. As a matter of fact, we have a deposition sent in by one of their sons from the mission field. And with your permission, Your Honor, I would like to call Brian Joyce to the stand. Permission granted. Now let's hear from Brian Joyce. Hello, my name is Brian Joyce, and I am the son of the defendant and his accomplice. And I would like to remind the court at the beginning of my testimony that even though I only observed six or seven years of the defendant's 30, 40 years of ministry at Johnson City Alliance Church, many of the patterns of behavior that the defendant is being tried for were already beginning to be uh, apparent during those early years, in the, in the, in the early 1980s. When we moved to, the jo to Johnson City in 1979, as I recall, we lived in the Fox Motel for about uh, two weeks. Not sure if it's still there or not. Um, we were waiting 
for uh, my parents to acquire their current residence, uh, where they are now located. Getting a house for our family was, however, easy compared to the challenge that faced the defendant. Starting a church from scratch with only 17 people gathered in a home somewhere, no idea how it was going to happen, just trusting God to bring it about. Uh, during those early years, there was a lot of help that my parents received from college students, the flight school, and many of those young people that helped out in the early days of the church are now serving the Lord around the world in uh, various capacities. Um, and many of them got their start working alongside uh, my mom and dad in the early years of Johnson City Alliance Church. At one point, I remember uh, that our Sunday worship in the Johnson City Parks and Recreation Board building was led by a trio of young 20-somethings playing guitars. I have memories of uh, attending Sunday school in a large ballroom type room with rolls of corrugated cardboard that we would pull out of the closet and unroll to, uh, to partition off the different groups that we're having in Sunday school. Uh, in many ways, Dad has pastored several different churches down through the years. Many of those early faces, from my memory, are now gone. Most of them are gone. By the time I graduated from college and came back to visit the church in the early 1990s, many of the faces were new. But as individuals and families cycled through the church, often moving on as God sovereignly placed them in new places, lives were being touched. And the church, not just Johnson City Alliance Church necessarily, but the church, Christ Church, was being built up just as Jesus promised in Ephesians 4, as each part, not just Art and Bonnie Joyce, but as each part did its work. And I can testify that the defendant and his wife did their part as members of the body. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, Your Honor, that these defendants, Art and Bonnie Joyce, were a gift of God's grace, not just to Johnson City Alliance Church, but to me as a member of the church and as a member of their family. Their love and their discipline and their instruction and example have taught me so much and have prepared me for the calling that God has placed on my own life as I seek to serve Him. Mom and Dad taught me by instruction and example to be a genuine, real disciple of Jesus. They encouraged me by their instruction and their example to seek to know God. When I was church planning in Asheville, North Carolina, for five years before becoming an international worker, it was so difficult. And I remember during those years often thinking about my parents just over the mountains in Johnson City and how they had been faithful for 15 years at that time to serve the flock over which God had placed them. And it was an encouragement to me to keep going even when things were difficult and I felt like I couldn't keep going. I truly believe, Your Honor, that much of what Art and Bonnie, my parents, these defendants, have done will only truly be known when Jesus returns. We all love them so much and we appreciate them so much, but really, I want to remind the court of what the Apostle Paul said whose inspired opinion should not be taken lightly by this court, I might add. He said this in 1 Corinthians 13, 3. Each one's work will become manifest, for the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. And then in chapter 4, verses 3 to 5, listen to this, Your Honor. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by any human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself. For I am not aware of anything against myself, but I am not thereby acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Therefore, pay attention, Your Honor, therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time. Before the Lord comes, who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Then each one will receive his commendation from God. I rest my case, Your Honor. Your Honor, young, beautiful, talented members of the jury, <laughs> I have been.
been amused at all the charges that have been brought against this defendant. Do you not realize that we have been talking about how great art is rather than how great thou art? In other words, you're forgetting who really built this church. The Lord Jesus Christ. It is He who worked through our joys to accomplish His good works here at JCAC. 1 Corinthians 3.11 says, For no man can lay a foundation other than the one that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. All the attributes exhibited in the life of this man are the result of Jesus living through him and caring for his flock. 2 Corinthians 3.5 says, Our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant. Art Joyce has been willing to be used by God at JCAC. And He, the Lord Jesus Christ, will continue to mold it and make it into the church He wants it to be. You see, the energy Art has is a gift that has been given to him by God in order to perform his work here at JCAC. Philippians 2.13 says, For it is God who is at work in you both to will and to work his good pleasure. Your Honor, I urge you to dismiss this action against Art Joyce and his accomplice Bonnie Joyce. After all, he was only doing the will of the Most High God, a power much higher than this court. I rest my case. <coughs> Counsel, yeah. you've made your point. Case dismissed. <laughs>
One last thing I would like to ask the jury. As faithful members of the Johnson City Alliance Church, under Pastor Joyce's ministry, what is the most important thing he has taught you? story. The story was one of deep love and respect for art. One shared that he has prayed for art every single day of his ministry. That was amazing to hear. I was, I was blessed in hearing that. We will now share a glimpse from a few of hundreds or even thousands of people that have crossed paths with Art and Bonnie over the last three four years of the ministry. The first is the early 70s by John and Peggy Smith. Peggy and I first met Art and Bonnie when they moved in, into the trailer next to us on the campus of Toccoa Falls College. I use the word trailer because the words mobile home gives the impression of luxury. <laughs> this, was, this was in the early 1970s when prices were low, as was our income. We became very, very good friends as we shared the experiences of preparing for pastoral ministry. As I, John, recall, we did not get into too many theological debates. We were too busy having fun to get too entangled in theology. I, John, can still see Bonnie and Peggy rolling their eyes as Art and I skipped down the street or tried to walk through a doorway side by side. <laughs> I have since grown up, but silly Art still tries to do that when we're together at council or other meetings. We remember two instances that are memorable. I preface the first by saying I hope Art has learned to knock on a locked door before trying to open it. <laughs> Early one morning, as we prepared for the day, the front door, locked front door, of our trailer was almost torn off the hinges as Art yanked it open. He was returning an item to us and thought the door was unlocked. He scared poor Peggy to death. The other memory was when we traveled to Anderson, South Carolina to a restaurant, Tower Johnson's, I think. After eating the main course, we ordered some rum plum ice cream. Of course, there was no alcohol in it, but the way the four of us acted, you would have thought we set aside the ice cream and drank the yum. Drank the rum, yum. I, John, had the privilege of working with our while at Tacoa. He was an electrician. I was his assistant. That meant I carried all the stuff, and he did all the wiring. I did learn a little, enough to realize not to touch any wiring at all. Those days at Tacoa were wonderful, and we formed a great friendship with the Joyce's that has lasted over the years. I, John, still have the NASB Bible Art gave me when Peggy and I left for our first church. I still use it every day for my study Bible. 
To our dear friends, may God's rich blessings be yours as you begin a new and different segment of your life and ministry. Just remember, you are not old, just seasoned laborers in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. You are in our thoughts and prayers. All our love, John and Peggy Smith. P.S. Art, if you come to visit us, please knock on the door. Peggy still keeps it locked. This is from Ron and Reba Mayer, the senior pastor that mentored Art following graduation from college. It was 1975, after Durham Alliance Church had been praying for some time that we would be given clear direction concerning the selection of an assistant pastor. I drove to Toccoa Falls College to seek a candidate for the position. I went to Mr. Detroit Amron, DMN, and asked him if there was any graduating senior that he could recommend. Without hesitation, he said yes, I would recommend Art Joyce. Following his lead, I interviewed Art. He candidated and was called to be our assistant. It soon became obvious that Art and Bonnie were a very real ministry team. Bonnie was as clearly called to ministry as Art was. There were a number of qualities that made them valuable partners in ministry. A sincere desire to exalt Christ, a teachable spirit, a keen sense of humor, a genuine love for people, things meant little to them, a selfless, giving spirit. An incident took place at our home, which I believe illustrates this. Art was there with us when a lady who had just recently come to the Lord came by. In the course of conversation, she mentioned that her car would not pass inspection because she had a brake light out. Without saying a word, Art slipped out to remove the brake light from his car and put it in hers. He came back and said, now your car will pass inspection. What a heart. Although we know it, it was God's will for them to leave, their leaving was a great loss to the church and to Reba and me personally. It is obvious that God had a higher purpose which was wonderfully fulfilled in the planting and growing of the church there in Johnson City. As Art and Bonnie enter this new phase of life, Reba and I trust that it will be rich and rewarding. They have been faithful servants of our Lord. We know they will continue to have a servant ministry wherever God places them. We thank God for bringing them into our lives. It was a joy to serve with them for three years. Joyfully in Christ, Reba, or Ron and Reba Mayers. What I'm going to read to you now is from the official newspaper of the Southern District of the Christian Missionary Alliance, which I wasn't didn't even know they had one. But. <laughs> From January 1979, New Church in Johnson City, and there's a picture of the Joyce's. On the 1st of January of this year, Reverend Arthur, Arthur Joyce and his wife Bonnie began the new extension work in Johnson City, Tennessee. Art and Bonnie are graduates of Toccoa Falls College, and before coming to Johnson City, Art served as assistant pastor to Reverend Ron Mayer, pastor in Durham, North Carolina. They have 10-year-old twins, Brenda and Brian. Johnson City is a growing tri-city area with Kingsport and Bristol, which has a population of about 450,000 people. Several Alliance families moved there from Ohio and Florida, and these formed a nucleus to begin an Alliance church there. Art recently wrote the following article for the Southern Breezes. For I am confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day of Jesus. <clears throat> How many times have we claimed this promise as we set out on a new venture for God? The Johnson City Alliance Church is seeing the outworking of this principle daily as God is building his church in this area. He's drawing together a group of Christians, each of whom has been provided with a different gift that he can use to build the body. We praise Him for each one. Sunday school classes were begun on March 4th with an enrollment of 30 people in three different classes, children, teens, and adults. God has provided gifted teachers for each class. 
Sunday services are held in a city recreation center. And Wednesday night prayer meeting is held at different homes on a rotating basis. A ladies missionary prayer group meets twice a month. Members are seeking to evangelize by means of good news clubs and plans are being made for pioneer girls and home Bible studies in the various neighborhoods represented. The meeting place is near ETSU campus and about 10 to 12 students have been attending weekly. Sunday, March 4th, saw 39 people in attendance in the morning service. God is building His church in Johnson City. If you know of students, this isn't for you guys, this was it. If you know of students or families who live in this area, please send their names to Reverend Arthur Joyce, Route 5, Box 362, Senior Value, Jonesboro, Tennessee. He will be happy to contact you. My letter is from uh, Bill and Lois Neighbors. Uh, I guess Bill was the CMA District Superintendent back in 1979. It doesn't seem possible that 35 years ago, 1978, I picked up a young fellow at the Knoxville Airport and took him to Johnson City, where the, there were a number of people desiring to start an Alliance Church. Both Art and the people came to an agreement, and Art became the first pastor in January of 1979. Some would say that Art has a stubborn streak, but I would call it conviction or steadfastness. This conviction revealed itself a few months after the church started when a number of the members lost their jobs and moved away from the city. This did not make Art lose heart or question God's direction, but he steadfastly believed it was the God's will for him to be in Johnson City. As parents, Art and Bonnie have had an ideal Christian family. Just look at their handsome children. Each one is a, is a Christian desiring to do the will of God in his or her life. They are certainly to be commended in training their children according to the Word of God. Art is a born leader. For 35 years, he has led the church through many changes and problems and has done so with flying colors. Above all, he has been my friend. We have laughed and joked together, played and prayed, and ministered together through the years. Congratulations, Art and Bonnie, for a job well done. Sincerely, Bill and Lois Neighbors. The letter that I have is from Joe Beck, <clears throat> Director of Church Planting and Extension 1979. Greetings. <clears throat> well done, good and faithful servants, Art and Bonnie Joyce. I thank God every time I remember you and all my prayers for you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you and through you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. That's from Philippians 1, verses 3 through 6. Art and Bonnie. I have fond memories of those visits in your home and with the small group of believers that rented that building 35 years ago. I remember the excitement and enthusiasm you evidenced as you directed the music and shared your Christ-honoring Bible message. It was a special joy and unique privilege for me as Director of Church Planning and Extension to have a small part in the formation of another scene and M.A. Church in the district. Brother Art, I know from personal experience what it is to be founder and first pastor of a new church. More than 60 years ago, right out of college, just three adults asked me to be their spiritual leader in the formation of a new church. At times, things were discouraging, finances were tight, and growth was small. But in time, and by the grace of God, a church was established. After four short years, God moved me along to another church, but you, Brother Art, stood tall, worked hard, and in God's time, established a strong, growing fellowship of believers. It is therefore my joy and personal privilege to join the members and friends of the Johnson City Alliance Church in commending you for many years of faithful ministry and by congratulating you on a job well done. 
as you conclude your leadership there, retire from the daily responsibilities of a pastor and seek God's direction for you and Bonnie. As you continue your walk with God in joyful expectation of the coming of our Lord, God bless you both. Love and prayers, Joe Beck, retired pastor, friend, and prayer partner. P.S. Sorry, so sorry we cannot attend this important occasion because of age and health issues. However, be assured of our continued daily prayers. Say a couple. Of, uh, remember a couple of stories from the, the early days of the church, and uh, I had so many I really had some problems. But at any rate, uh, in 1978, there were three families who moved into the Johnson City area, all coming from an alliance background. Meanwhile, there was a retired couple living here in this area that really laid the foundation of this church. They had prayed for two years for an Alliance Church to be here. Their names are David, uh, David Dina, and Joe Bradford. After moving to the area, uh, the district superintendent at that time, Bill Neighbors, uh, wrote and asked if he could come and visit with us. Uh, we told him that we would be glad to host a Bible study. Oh, he did come and visit us, and he asked if there would be an interest in a church plan. Uh, we told him that we would be glad to host a Bible study, but we had no idea how to plan a church. But when he arrived back home, he had received a letter from another couple in Melbourne, Florida. Uh, Ronnie, Ronnie Curtis, who is here with us today, who had been part of an Alliance Church plant down there. Uh, he then sent the names of the graduates, and we contacted them and established a second meeting date for the district superintendent to meet with the small group. The meeting was held on September 78. There were six of us in attendance, plus, of course, Bill Neighbors, the district superintendent. At, at the end of the meeting, I asked Bill, well, how many people would it really take to start a church? He looked around the room and he said, I think about six. <laughs> uh, he said that he really believed that God was trying to tell him something. Uh, prior to that time, they had really not looked at this area because they had not considered the Tri-Cities area. They looked at Kingsport, they looked at Johnson City and so on, but not as an area. Uh, as we were not a church yet, we could not call a pastor. Uh, so, uh, Bill Davis uh, called a young couple from Durham, North Carolina, and uh, we were soon to meet Art and Body Joyce. Uh, the first service was conducted in uh, January of 79 in the rec room of John and Becky Frank, who also had just moved into the area. Uh, Pastor Art conducted our first service that day, and after the service, and after prayer, soon arrangements were made for the Joyce's to move to Johnson City with the twins, at that time, Brian and Brenda. God really knew what he was doing. Now for a couple of favorite memories of duties in mind. Uh, the, four, the first story we smile at actually quite often uh, was in order to save a little money on gasoline, uh, Art decided to purchase a small used motorcycle. <laughs> now as we lived just over the hill from them, uh, he decided, decided to ride his new purchase uh, over to our house. Oh, okay, very good. So as he pulled into the driveway, I noticed something looked rather strange. So stop for a minute and consider a motorcycle helmet. Normally, when they're on correctly, it covers the back of the mouth, back of the neck, and down to the top of your forehead. But if you should by chance put it on backwards, you can hardly see your eyes and pull back your head as said he thought it did fasten on the wrong side of his chin when he put the helmet on. I can still remember, oh, uh, shortly after the motorcycle incident, a retired couple that prayed this church into being, Joe and Davidina, well, she really didn't think 
it was dignified for a pastor to write a letter. <laughs> so a few weeks later, after our pastor came to church with his arm in a sling, <laughs> he had somehow been in a slight accident. If I remember right, it was maybe the collarbone. I can still remember him turning pages in the Word while preaching with one arm in the sling. I often wonder if Mrs. Bradford may have quietly smiled as she reflected upon actually witnessing answered prayer. That is, that he would quit riding that crazy motorcycle. The second story I'll share is from a time period before we built the building. As uh, I'll previously mentioned, we had our Sunday services in the rec center in Johnson City and Wednesday night services in different homes. One night while meeting at Elizabethton, Art and Bonnie decided to spend the previous night by staying up all night long. For you see, Laura was being born at home and Bonnie declared it should be an all night experience. <laughs> well, the baby was fine, but both mom and dad were dead tired. But the new father came to lead our prayer meeting that night as a good pastor should. After the prayer requests were taken, Pastor Art suggested that we should pray as led, and he would close. <laughs> One after another, various people prayed around the room, and then there was dead silence. <laughs> Although it seemed like an hour, it was probably less than a minute, since I was sitting across the prayer circle for Mark, I decided to peek. Well, there he was, head bowed, eyes closed, perfect posture for prayer. But he seemed to be taking deep, deep breaths. <laughs> as his chest moved in and out. Finally, I said loudly, Amen. And he woke right up. I used to kid him about telling Bill, Bill Neighbors that he gave us a pastor who would sleep through prayer meeting and his wife wouldn't even attend. <laughs> well, I recall a few events that were humorous to me, maybe not art. <laughs> but we do have wonderful memories and we commend you all for what you've done here. This is incredible and I love to see the kids. It's just, oh, wonderful. So, thank you. <laughs> So I hope you'll forgive me for poking fun at the Reverend Arthur Joyce. <laughs> but you see, for me, Art's more than a pastor. Art's my friend. Uh, it was he that really helped me understand uh, that pastors put their, their pants on one leg at a, at a time in the morning, just like I do. And uh, we've had wonderful times together as friends. And Art and Bonnie are just plain real people. Well, although our job moved us out after only four years here at JCAC, some 29 years ago, I still consider Art to be my pastor. He and his bride are jewels, and they have given their lives to serve in this capacity. Judy and I love them both. And as I reflected upon their lives, I was reminded of one of the Apostle Paul's analogies in 1 Corinthians. Both Art and Bonnie have ran the race, not to win a perishable uh, prize here on earth, but to stretch forth their very beings to reach that goal where they will receive that imperishable crown they have truly laid up treasures in heaven. So thanks, Art and Bonnie, for serving well. Someday you'll surely hear, well done, my good and faithful servants. Curtis, and I'm so happy to be here today. Um, <coughs> it's so wonderful to see this large crowd as a kind of a fulfillment of 35 years of ministry. And I'm so excited about the young people because in the beginning we didn't have any, and it was a prayer thing for years 
that we would draw the young people because I believe that if you have the young people, you have the parents. I've always thought that the shortest distance between a problem and a solution is the distance from your knee to the floor. And in the beginning, I had come up from Florida in January of 77 to discover that there was no Alliance Church in this area. And I've been in Alliance for 45 years. My wife, when she passed away, had been in the lines for 71 years. And <clears throat> that's what we love. This feels like home to me. And I want to thank uh, Art. And I didn't expect to be like this when I came up here. This would be a happy event to acknowledge Art and Bonnie's work in their ministry all these years. I left Florida because I had the opportunity to start a church down there, at least the first meeting was in my living room. And when I came, uh, Pastor Strecker and I and some other guys were nailing shingles on the roof. So I had to leave that work before it got finished. And the closest church, Alliance Church, when we came, was either Knoxville or Roman. And as Don said, some of us came to the area desiring another Lions Church. This was a background. And David, Dana, and Joe, Don and Judy, and myself, I left my wife in Florida to try to sell some real estate so she could join me. And I think for two or three years, the church here thought I was just joking when I said I was married and I had a wife because I'd never seen her. <laughs> but we, you know, when you start a church, you have nothing except the Lord and each other. You don't have songbooks, you don't have piano, you have nothing and you have to start from scratch. It makes me feel like when I've gone on mission trips and see what little they have to start with and missionaries are trying to do with what they've got and, and honor God through it. Um, we met in the Johnson City uh, rec building over on Legion Street for about four years. It was not an ideal place. I was there one Sunday when a mouse went across the floor. <laughs> And you would have been there to see how quick a couple of ladies could get up in their chair. <laughs> the piano was not the best. It sounded like something that might have come over on the ark. But we were a very happy group. And um, when Art came, he was a nucleus around which the work here continued. I remember working on this building. We built this building. It has 5,600 square feet, or it did before the new addition was added. And we built for $17 a square foot. I'm sure the new building uh, probably cost 10 times that much. Um, but these walls are 10 feet high. I remember the day that the rafters were lying out here in the, in the ground. We had a crane that we had rented for one day. And we had probably 10 or 12 guys uh, who came out that Saturday and we were going to set the rafters. And Joe Scarborough's husband, Leo, was a professor at the university teaching uh, mathematics and statistics, very sharp mathematician. And I put him up on this wall over here to, to nail the rafters on that side. Art was right in the very top, trying to anchor the rafters as they were brought up. We set all the rafters in a day. Our crane operator said he couldn't believe it, that happened. But we had such a good working group and we were all anxious to see a, a finished church that we come in and, and worship God. I remember when this was just a concrete slab, 
and the kids came and had a skating party right in the road station. That was fun. Um, these lights came as an idea from the church that I helped build in, in uh, or Merritt Island, Florida. I remember Pam Degler's dad agreed that he would build these. Now these are six-sided hexagonal lights. They're just like the ones in Merritt Island if you ever get down to Florida. And so he, he started, he got five sides done and he was trying to figure out, he said, that's really a struggle to get that six piece in place. And he said, well, how can we make this happen? And I said, well, why don't you build two, three sides and then just put them together? <laughs> uh, Jack uh, Jordan over there, he was outside uh, when we were sitting Raptors and he was, his job was to hook the, the chain and the rope to the rafter so that the crane operator could lift it up, put it in place. We have so many good memories. Art is a fantastic electrician. He did, he and, and I don't remember if it was Bonnie's or his dad uh, did the wiring for the whole church. That was my husband. It was your husband. All George right. Gardner. Okay, I couldn't remember we, which. We also took movies of uh, putting those rafters up. Yes, and Art also was a, a pretty good uh, plumber, and so just the volunteer effort, people come in on Saturdays and whenever they had time off from work, we would come and work here, and it was such a period of camaraderie. My wife was charged uh, with the Alliance Witness, or it's now called, I think, the Alliance Watt, uh, Life, and she, every year, was the uh, uh, membership she would try to get people to sign up for another year of my slide. And I know she gave Art uh, many gray hairs and wrinkles because he's a man that likes to be in control. And when Pat was up here, he never knew what she was going to do. <laughs> I remember one time she came with Christmas uh, lights all over her body. She came up here and she uh, was making her pitch for Lance Life membership, and she plucked that sucker in, and, it was <laughs> and she just lit up like a Christmas tree. Uh, I wasn't sure I was okay with that, but everybody knew that when she got up, something went like that crazy with that. <laughs> we have so many good memories of the early days, and we were just getting started, and. Uh, we serve a great and wonderful God. Amen. He created us a little lower than the angels. He created us in His own image. He loved us that much. Isaiah says He knows our thoughts before we even put them into words. We serve a wonderful God. Go with that to his name, Art and Bonnie. I love you being my pastor. I love you being my mentor. And I wish you all the best as you go from this work to your retirement years. And you're missing and we'll miss him much, I'm sure. Thank you. congregation from 1981 until 95. We were also over in the recreational building and yes, I do remember the mouse. I'm very thankful that the Lord allowed us to be part of this congregation. 
The only reason we left was because the Lord was leading us into a different ministry and we're still there today. It's already been mentioned that, that Pastor Joyce is a man of many talents. I was amazed. I had never been around anybody that could do all the practical things that he could do. Just, just being here and, and watching this building being put together, he, he was involved in the framing, the plumbing, the electrical. It seemed like regardless of what the job was, he knew how to do it. He was the first person I had ever met that just seemed to have all those abilities of being able to do whatever was necessary, and I thought that was something that was very impressive. Something else was very impressive. If the day ever comes that this building needs to be taken apart, <laughs> somebody's going to discover that back when it was built, Art went around and wrote all over it. Not on the outside where people would see it, but on the inside where it would last. There are scripture verses written on the studs of this building. There are scripture verses that were written on the drywall. My wife helped with the painting. She remembers painting over drywall where the pastor had written Bible verses. Things like, except the Lord build a house. They labor in vain who build it. That's impressive. That's the kind of pastor you have. Art's an excellent role model. Over the years, I've noticed that he's always been careful of what he does and what he doesn't do, so that he might not bring reproach on the ministry. Art has been my mentor and my confidant as I have tried to, to grow in my own ministry, and he has been a very good role model. He is very discreet. People that I would know nothing about, he still doesn't mention their names. He is discreet. What you see is what you get. He is a solid man of God. And then Bonnie, what a gracious woman of God you are. You've been a faithful servant of the ministry for as long as we've known you. Truly, you're an example of what a Christian wife ought to be. The Pikes, thank you both for your faithfulness to us. Yes, you have, you have certainly been faithful to this congregation, but from our family to yours, thank you for all that you have done for us. I was invited to come up here and, and tell some anecdotes or stories, things of things that went on back at the in the early days of the church. Uh, one thing I learned here was was going out on visitation. There was one night that uh, I went out with uh, Art and Bonnie on visitation. That was back when they still had that little blue Volkswagen rep. How many of you remember the blue Volkswagen rep? Okay. We had gone somewhere up in the direction of North Kingsport and we were headed back on John B. Dennis. And I don't remember why now, but Art needed to make a right turn in the vicinity of, of where Indian Path Hospital is. And as usual, he was, you know, driving every bit of it. Watching, and here's this woman, and all you could see was. <laughs> <laughs> and the rabbit slides to a stop right next to her, and it's like, <sighs> and Art just goes, <laughs> <laughs> and pulls on. And that being, me being a smart aleck and, and never missing an opportunity, I said, you didn't invite her to church. <laughs> And Art says, I don't think she would come. <laughs> the Joyce's have always been a fun family to know. One time years ago when we still had kids at home, I found this really great sleddy hill over near the exit, airport exit off Interstate 81. <coughs> well, it turned out that the owner of this hill had a canoe and a barn. And he asked all of us if we had ever gone sledding down a hill in a canoe. 
Well, in, in spite of our misgivings as to how this might turn out, since we were good, honest Christian people, we had to admit, no, we never had. And so, nothing would do but that we go to his barn, and we lug this great aluminum clunk of a canoe across the meadow and, and out to the hill, and then we're going to ride it down the slope. I'm sure you can picture the look on Bonnie's face as she stood there looking at this thing. And then she turns to Barbara and she says, are you all prayed up? <laughs> Actually, it turned out to be very anticlimactic. It went down the hill really slow. And then we had to get it back up the hill. That was really slow. It sounded a whole lot more exciting when the guy was telling about it than it actually turned out to be. But at least all of us were able to cross off sledding down a hill in a canoe off our bucket list. <laughs> Art is a very gracious person, especially considering that he's a Yankee. Uh, I discovered this the first time that we went over to their house. The Joyce's had invited us for dinner. Back then, my children were still quite small. We pulled up in Art's driveway, and we got out, and suddenly this dog comes charging around the corner of the house, barking like crazy, and my little three-year-old daughter just freaks out. And the dog comes running right at us. Well, I did the reflexive thing and booted the dog across the yard, <laughs> just as Art steps out the front door. And I said, whose dog is that? And he said, well, uh, that's my dog. <laughs> and they still had us for dinner. <laughs> that was very gracious. <laughs> Art also has a quick wit. I remember one of the first nights that we had talent night here at the church. Art had got out a table and he set up a bunch of, of water goblets on the table. And you make music by running your rings, your finger around the, the rim of the goblet and, and depending upon how much water is in there, it makes musical tones. You've all heard that stuff. Well, there was just one problem. A couple of the goblets, for whatever the reason, refused to make any noise. Art would rub his finger off, but they wouldn't make any noise. Art didn't have any problem with that. As soon as he realized they weren't going to do anything, when he got to those particular goblets, he just kept right on going. <laughs> Sometimes that's the way ministry works, isn't it? You know, things just don't work the way you expect them to, and you just stay on tune, and you keep going, and it works out anyway. Amen? There was one, one musical occasion when Art refused to play. The music wasn't there. Art had mentioned owning this odd musical device known as a snoop flute. Some kind of thing that you would put over your nose and your mouth and you would blow air out your nose and you adjusted the tune by how you changed the shape of your mouth. Well, that sounded just, that sounded amazing. And, and Barbara said she would love to see such a thing. And I said, well, unfortunately, um, my snoot flute is broken and, and I can't show it to you. Well. Barbara decided she just had to see such such a remarkable musical instrument in action. And she finally managed to obtain one. And with great anticipation, she presented it to Art and asked him if he would please play it for her. And he paused and he said, I can't. She was so disappointed that he would, he would do her that way. And then he said, I have a cold. <laughs> right. Got it. So he never did play it for her. But that's okay. You can do it. You can do it. But since we are honoring art today, we won't put you through it right now.
paper. This last is a letter here from Laura C., uh, daughter of Art and Bonnie. She sent it to us this week, so I'd like to read that. Hi, Mom and Dad. Congratulations on this next step of your journey. God has taken good care of you all these years, and we know he'll continue to provide. We believe that whatever you, wherever you go, God will use your lives for his good will. Thank you for all of your care for us over the years. Johnson City Alliance Church was a good place for me, Laura, to grow up, and I have so many fond memories of it. We love you both and pray that God will fill you with joy as you follow where he leads. Much love, Aaron, Laura, and kids. more could I say? <clears throat> Just imagine 34 years at the same church. S seeing a church that from its early beginnings until today, what memories that must bring back to Art and Bonnie. I believe Art and Bonnie came to Jossi Alliance Church because of their calling and that calling resulted in a vision. They came to be a witness and they came to minister according to that vision. Art, Bonnie, as you look out over the congregation, you can now see the fruits of that vision. You are finishing well. And for that we give glory to God. Yes, we will joke with you. Yes, we will remember the funny things that happened, but most of all we will remember that you and Bonnie are servants of the Lord, servants of the Most High God. And we deeply appreciate that. We deeply appreciate that, and we know that God now he is moving you on to the next phase of your ministry. It will not be without its challenges, but of course you have faced challenges before. And by the grace of God, you will continue to minister, you will continue to serve Him wherever He might appoint you. There will be many memories over your 34 years of ministry here at Justice. Alliance Church <clears throat> and these memories will always affirm that God has led you all the way and you have been a blessing to each and every one of us we appreciate you deeply we, we love you in the Lord we appreciate the extra miles that you have gone along the way to bring us to this point in our journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's my honor to present to you, and I would like you just to step forward, please. Bonnie. I see that look on your face. Oh, again. <laughs> this book of memories will be a testimony of the righteousness and the faithfulness and the spiritual growth that has taken place here at Johnson City. But most of all, I remember the steadfastness in service. Art and Bonnie have been very steadfast in their continuation to keep on keeping on in the calling that God has placed upon their lives. And it's our prayer that as you look through this book of memory, or memories, that 
you too will give thanksgiving to the Lord. As Paul said in the book of Philippians, I thank my God for every remembrance of you, and I trust that will be the case. <clears throat> Pastor, I would like to present you with this envelope. And this envelope is somewhat of a an under the table to remember us as, as we would like for you to remember us. And it is a gift of love from the congregation. And it's also been requested that you open this envelope. Drum roll. <laughs> Now remember, this is this is a uh, a love offering that we are presenting as a congregation to our pastor for his faithfulness, and uh, it has been collected over the past three, maybe four weeks, and we are certainly appreciative of the contributions that all have made towards that. Two hundred seventy-two thousand. <laughs> <laughs> That's the date. Sorry. $8,805. We appreciate this more than we can say. This should not up. This should pay for the gas getting down to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, this congregation is a special congregation. I've always said that. And when it came time that the Lord made it very clear to us that we were supposed to leave and enter into retirement from this church anyway, I was very concerned that God would not forsake the church, but that he would have the next person prepared to be, come into this congregation. And I felt, as I talked with the superintendents, to the superintendent, that I said, this is not an ordinary church. And it's not. It's different. It's unique. And I was very much in prayer that God would give direction to the next man coming in. I believe that he has given direction in Paul Frederick coming in. He'll be here next week and coming in as an interim pastor. I believe God has some very good things for you. And then as you select a permanent pastor after his ministry is finished, I know that God is going to direct you in that as well. Because this is not my church. This is God's church. Amen. And you are a tree of God's planting. And you are all a part of this. And that's why it's so important that you have the unity of the Spirit and that you continue to seek God because He is the head of this church. That you continue to pray. That you love one another as Christ has loved you. And that you make every effort to do, to be faithful to the work that God has called you to do here on this hill. We know for a certainty that God has called us from this place. It will be hard for us to go, as some of you have said that it would be hard to see us go. Because remember, you can still see one another every week. We won't be able to see you. And that will be hard. And it will be hard as we worship in other locations. But we know that God is in other locations. He is in other congregations. 
He is working through them. And we can worship there and know that we will hear from God because he is leading us. We don't know exactly where we're going. But God does know where we're going. Our way is committed to him. In talking with our son Brian, he said to me, Dad, he said, I think what you need to do is to take a long sabbatical. You need to get away for no less than a year and just refresh yourself in the Lord and renew yourself in the Lord because he said, I think you're tired. Well, he's, he's right. How can I argue with a missionary son? <laughs> Especially one who's so intelligent. <laughs> He's after his mother. <laughs> he said, it's unfortunate that pastors don't have that because he said international workers do. They can come home every four years, or whatever their schedule is, and they can have time to renew themselves apart from their tours that they have to go on. It's not that we're tired of you. That's not the case. We love you. But we know that God has something else for you. I don't know exactly what, but I know that he has something for you because he's the head of this church. As I said, we don't know exactly where we're going either. We, you know that we have a van. <laughs> And you know that we're going to be homeless because the interim pastor is coming and taking our house. <laughs> but as we go kind of where the wind blows for a little while anyway, we know that God is blowing the wind that's going to move us. We're not through praying for you. And I hope that you won't be through praying for us either. But we want you to give your full support to the next pastor. I firmly endorse him, and I'll mention this again next week. Great man of God. And I, I think you're really going to be blessed by his ministry. Keep looking to the Lord. We didn't build this church despite all of the things that you heard. The Lord built the church. And he used you to do it. We just happened to be there at the right time. There were many times when I was ready to just give it all up and leave. Bonnie can give witness to this and testimony to this. That there were times when I would say to her, I don't want to ruin the church. And I think I should leave. But God never gave me the freedom to leave. At one point, our superintendent asked me to go candidate at a church in Birmingham. And I said, I don't feel God directing me to do that. He said, well, I think you should. And I said, okay, because you're my superintendent, I'll do that. And I went and did candidate at that church. They didn't call me, but it wouldn't really wouldn't have mattered if they had because I knew that that wasn't where God wanted me to be. He wanted me to be here yet. God has given me the freedom to leave now. And it's, it's going to be hard for us, as it may be hard for you. But we have a God who wraps us in his arms, and he comforts us, and he loves us, and he's going to continue to lead us. Don't lose the feel of his arms about you. But extend your arms around others and pull them in because they need to see the God that we serve and that we love. Thank you very much from the depths of our heart for your love gift to us. The under the table love <laughs> that will probably go on my tax report next year. Probably. What? You said probably? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm still working on whether I should put that. No, it will. But we love you. Keep that in mind. I will be speaking next week. 
So come back if you want to be there for the last time. <laughs> and um, hold tight to one another as you're holding tight to the Lord. Let's stand together. Stand. After, after, we, after we close in prayer, Jenny, could you come up and take a picture of this whole group for us? I want you to sit back down and have her take a picture. It's amazing to see all these tables fall. Those of you who remember 10 years ago when we got like 30 or 40 people prayed for kids. God is so wonderful. That's part of to pray. Father God, we do thank you that you are faithful. You are loving. You are persevering and you are steadfast in your pursuit of us in righteousness and holiness, and loving kindness. Father, we thank you for Art and Bonnie. We thank you for their testimony, their example of ministry. We thank you, Father, for allowing them to stay among us all these years. We're thankful, Lord, for all who have given testimony of memories and uh, of working together. And Lord, we're most of all thankful that you have brought this church into existence. We thank you. We honor you. Lord, your servants come and they go, yet the body of Christ remains. And Father, we do pray that your blessing will rest upon this congregation over the next uh, several months. We thank you, Lord, for your, your protection, your loving arms that is wrapped around each and every one of us. We thank you, Father, that uh, we can follow in the train of Art and Bonnie and their steadfastness and their commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, we, we commission them as they would move on to the next phase of their walk with you and their ministry for you. We ask your richest blessing upon them. We pray that you would uh, remind them of where they have been, remind them of who they are now, and Lord, keep them mindful of what's ahead. Looking forward to and earnestly desiring the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, who will redeem the church and make the church perfect, without spot nor blemish in his sight. We pray, dear God, that your blessings would rest upon the entire Joyce family. Be with them as they have many opportunities of family time together. Help them, Lord, as they make decisions along the way. Help them, Lord, in sometimes a feeling of loneliness, a feeling of loss. Pray, Lord, that the loving arms of the Lord Jesus Christ himself, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, and all the promises of your word would fill their hearts and lives, that they might continue to grow and continue to serve you in, with all their heart, mind, and spirit. We thank you, Father, for this time together, and we commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen.